Hello everybody. I am here with a very well-known personality of German politics, environment and social justice. Monika Griffan. Since 2006, she is a regular guest at Buchinger Wilhelmi in order to reset her work-life balance, de-stress and find inspiration for multiple tasks. What brought you the first time to fast at Buchinger Wilhelmi? It was a very crazy moment because I had three times gone over the um, speed limit with my car and I thought, oh God, this was really stressful because this was just behind the election campaign 2005, which was very stressful for me to gain my mandate in the Bundestag. Mm -hmm. So I thought I need something completely different and I talked with my husband and he said if you really want to go somewhere where you relax and feel well then go to Buchinger at the Bodensee because they have Demeter and stuff like that what you really like and that's how I came. So he knew yeah. the place from the um, from the organic aspect of the food and uh, Yes, because his family has lived in Nendingen, which is close to Tutling, it's not far away, and he has studied in Constance, so he knew the place, and of course we are both always have um, nourished ourselves with um, Demeter food and, and organic food and so on, so we are really into that. Uh, and uh, then when you were at the clinic, and this is how we met, mm -hmm. because That's you right. were at the beginning one of the guests, very discreet, you wanted to be on your own, mm -hmm and not to be disturbed because you had to, to regain your energy. But uh, incidentally, I asked you to give a lecture mm -hmm. and you gave a first lecture on Right Livelihood Award mm -hmm. and, another war, and another one on Cradle to Cradle. Mm -hmm. And could you just comment a little bit about these two institutions where you and your family are really uh, committed to? Yeah, I have been engaged in the Right Livelihood Award Foundation since 2000, uh, since 1995, so that's quite a long time, 36 years now. And um, I met Jakob von Uxkühl uh, on a conference and he asked me to participate in the jury in the board because Greenpeace should get the award, but was already famous. And we wanted to give it to people who are not so famous, but yes. can use as a support. So what we do is basically give an award in the Swedish parliament or it was in the Swedish parliament, now it's outside because the Swedish parliament has closed for all outside groups uh, to reward the activity for people who fight for the life, who fight for human rights, who fight for environment and are good examples for others. They can be multiplied. And if you see that we have really had the right people, you see that two of them of our award winners have got also the Nobel Peace Prize later on. Which was the Nobel Peace Prize at that time was not founded yet. So this is why you, the Right Livelihood Award took a little bit the, the place of that the Nobel... The, uh, exactly. Peace. Jakob von Uxkühl offered his uh, money founder, from a fund, yeah. yeah, the founder uh, offered his money for um, an award at the Nobel Foundation to um, give an award for development, environment, and peace. Mm -hmm. And they didn't want it because they said, we have just created an economic uh, award. So that's why we don't want it at the moment. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful thing. And now uh, the parallel activity, which has some uh, um, connections with the right line mm -hmm. also, this is cradle to cradle. Mm -hmm. And there you work uh, very intimately with your husband, uh, Michael Braun Braungart. And with my daughter and my um, son-in-law. Yes. <laughs> and Cradle to Cradle has been created as an association in Germany, which is a um, non-profit organization, which makes education about the way how we produce and how we can really recycle things. So not recycling of things into bad things afterwards, mm -hmm but create a product and a process chain in a way that uh, you can reuse the materials afterwards in a qualitative way and not in a downcycling way. 
And we think that has to be the natural way of producing, not that we have waste afterwards. The concept waste doesn't exist in cradle to cradle. Yes. And cradle to cradle only uses renewable energies and it praises diversity, diversity of cultures and diversity of biological things. Mm -hmm. So not one thing and uh, efficiency is the important point, but effectiveness. So there are a lot of things which are very effective, like your lipstick or music, but they are not efficient. Mm -hmm. And we want to show that nature is not efficient, but effective. Mm -hmm. It gives us a lot. And we want to produce like nature does, so that we can really use all substances again in the same way, and that they are healthy and good for the environment and for the human. So you, uh, Cradle to Cradle is one of the pioneers of what Uh, today you could call the movement of circular economy. But we, you have a very um, brilliant example with a washing machine. Mm -hmm. what, what would be this new form of production? The new form of production would be that you don't buy a washing machine, but you do uh, buy only the service. So that the uh, producer of a washing machine takes the best materials, makes a design and an engineering that the materials are fit together in a way that you can dismantle them afterwards. And you as a consumer basically get this machine into your house and you pay for a thousand times washing. Mm -hmm. And uh, if something is broken or if uh, a new generation of technology is coming, then it's up to the producer to give okay. you a new machine and not um, your problem. And you don't own waste, but you get this machine afterwards back to the producer so that he can use the materials again in the same qualitative way. So practically the producer has to design the product so that he can, uh, this company can take it back if yeah. you don't need it anymore and yeah. leave it on or if it's broken recycle completely yeah. the materials yeah. because he, bought, he he constructed them together so yes. that it can be dismantled. So the design yeah. is a very important point. Design mm -hmm. is not only a question of nice looking but also of selection of materials yes. and also selection of the gluing things. The, so that the, is the all the materials them. have to be Yeah. also selected in a way that they're good for the environment and good for your health. And in Cradle to Cradle you, you are working very, very much with people in the construction, architects and all the, mm -hmm. the chain of construction because you say a house could be a sort of bank yeah. of raw materials. Yes. So when you have a house, yeah. uh, it's not going to be demolished and mm -hmm. altogether mm -hmm. lost mm -hmm. since you uh, always stress Uh, that uh, the raw materials are very soon rare. lacking. Mm -hmm. uh, we see that at the moment, that a lot of materials are not there. And yes. we are waiting for yes. that. For instance, exactly. copper. Mm -hmm. And copper is a rare material altogether, even if you dig it out of the earth. Today, in the earth, there is much less copper per, uh, per one ton of earth that you only get probably 35, uh, 3.5 kilos of copper out of it. And in former times was probably 35 kilos of mm -hmm. copper. Mm -hmm. So you really have to take it back so that you can reuse it because at the moment people cannot produce some things because they don't have the raw materials mm -hmm. for it. So you have the aspect of not exhausting mm -hmm. uh, the resources of the earth and at the same time not not uh, putting all your waste that yeah. is going to finish in the oceans and yeah. back to the earth. Basically, the concept of waste doesn't exist yeah. in the idea of cradle to cradle. Yeah. There is no waste any longer. And it's interesting because if I go back to your fasting experience, mm -hmm. and somehow we, we are discovering that the fasting is also a way of triggering the mm -hmm. recycling of mm -hmm. your own fat, yeah. of your own proteins, mm -hmm so that you build no new ones out of the old ones. Yes. I feel very close to fasting because it is so, um, yeah. You, you're in coherence. The idea is, yeah, yeah. yeah, in coherence. It is comprehensive um, approach of your body as we see the comprehensive approach of production and yeah. producers and consumers. Because now you are at your 50th, yeah. 15th stay. So we are finishing, you're finishing 10 days of fasting. You look wonderful, you are fit, and uh, you have started the regeneration fast where you reintroduce progressively the food. Um, from the first fast 15 years ago, 
till today. Do you see an evolution in the way you fast, in your approach to this practice? Yes, I must say uh, the first time I was here, I really needed three weeks to recover and it took me a long time to get better. And now I only need these 10 days and it's quite good and I feel well. Also because the introduction of the fasting in the first day, I do now more smoothly. I don't do yeah. it in a radical way with um, salts, which also into, are possible to use. Yeah. And um, I really enjoy also the activities of um, walking, hiking, swimming, sports, etc. And what I really can do here is to close up the media completely. Mm -hmm. So I only take a little time a day to look at mails and so on, and the rest of the day I don't worry. And, and that's also very good if you make fasting of media. Yeah. But in the times where you were full into politics, you couldn't have done yeah, that. No? Exactly. And that's so, a quite a difference that yeah. I can enjoy today uh, more free time and more planning my day, which is yeah. quite good because I have my own company and it's up to me how I, um, okay. what I take. <laughs> so uh, the fasting has gotten a, a room for you, for your mm -hmm. own evolution, yes. for your own yes. development. And before it was just a way to quickly regenerate yeah. yes. your energy so yes. that you can yeah. go full power. To be productive again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's really nice. But how do you, your family members, your husband, your, mm -hmm. your children, uh, and maybe your co-workers mm -hmm. or friends react to fasting? Actually, they are all very positive. And my husband and my daughter has already fasted. And uh, they love it and they do it regularly at home. Also, my daughter and my son-in-law do it at home as well, yeah. which I think is very difficult. I love this um, closed atmosphere mm -hmm. here and the being pampered also. Yeah. It's very nice. Being taken care of. Yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. And, and, and that's very nice. And at home, it would be very difficult for me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and um, of course, if I talk to other people, they say, oh, yeah, I, I was thinking about doing that as well. So I might... I think you might get other guests as well. Yeah. You think there is an evolution in the way that people think about fasting? Yes, I think they appreciate that it really helps you. Yeah. And in this very hectic times, they think they get down a little bit. And that's, yeah. I think, in the time, the German word Achtsamkeit is mm -hmm. quite mm -hmm. used very much. Um, awareness or... Uh, yeah, awareness like or taking care of yourself. Yes. People think more about how can I do that and fasting is quite the opposite of this hectic yeah. life and yeah. probably that's why people more appreciate it now. Yeah. The deceleration yeah. when you come from a very active yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. That's very nice. Yes, uh, and um, I hope uh, we are going to see you next year uh, as our um, the public might have noticed we, we are really good friends mm -hmm. and uh, this is what happens for our family members. We are a family business, a family company and uh, when people come in a regular way, I had the big chance also to come more into your mm -hmm. activities so you un invited me to many uh, events of Cradle to Cradle mm -hmm. and in the clinic we are also changing our way of thinking uh, making a certification, a cradle to cradle mm -hmm. certification for a clinic. This mm -hmm. is something we're working out together. Mm -hmm. And we had the big privilege to have the right livelihood award. I must really thank uh, you also for that, that you really welcomed uh, the jury of the right livelihood award and really gave them really a good feeling here and also help our um, award winners, for instance, Sima Sama, mm -hmm. our Afghan award winner. Um, which really needs this time off here. And yeah. um, that's thank you very much that you offer that to her. It's a perfect example of win-win because mm. we came in, in touch with uh, extraordinary people and mm. this positive message in the mm. world. There are so many people mm. doing extraordinary Incredible work, uh, work mm. grassroots work. Mm. And um, all that is sometimes not praised in the press. Yeah. And when they come here and they explain... I think, how many dossiers do you study per year? About 120. 
100, 120. Mm. And mm. this is already the ones who have made things that are very yeah. selected. Yeah. And which so, can be repli yeah. replicated because yeah. we don't take a little project there and there. There are a lot of good projects. I don't yes. want to say anything against that, but it must be somehow replicable. Yes. Uh, so your whole life, you can say your whole uh, professional life, and but uh, also private life, has been dedicated to the protection of nature, to circular economy, to the people who take mm -hmm. care mm -hmm. of um, of the planet, mm -hmm. and of course in your in your own company now you go on uh, being a senior advisor mm -hmm. and you are one for the clinic Buchinger Wilhelmi. And we are very thankful. And I, I thank you very much for the privilege of having um, interviewed you. And like we said, see you next year. See you next year. Thank you very much for your hospitality and the friendliness which is here in the clinic. Thank you, Monica.